So um, welcome everyone. My name is Lisette. If you don't know who I am, I live in Las Vegas. I am a mommy of three and I've been with the company four years now. I think it sounds crazy to say. Um, so yeah, I recruiting and prospecting is my favorite part of the business. So I'm always so excited to do calls like this. Um, and I'm excited to see so many new faces. I know this um, call was shared in several chats, so it makes me excited and nervous at the same time. So I'm going to share my screen. I have a little bit of a slideshow. And again, you guys, this, if you're new or old, hopefully if you've been on the team for a while, um, you know, this is a refresher. Maybe it'll, it'll give you a new perspective on some things. Um, but if you are new, let me just make sure everyone's muted. Um, then you guys, this is just how I prospect and how I recruit. So everybody does it differently, um, but just know that, you know, you can take what you learn here, apply it, make it your own. Um, but that's kind of the beauty of this business is that we're always sharing with each other how we work our businesses and, you know, take what works for you, try new things and um, be excited. I think that's the best, the, the best and most important, important part of it. Hold on one second. I don't know how to... I'm trying to make it so it's automatically muted. One sec. Um, oh, well, I'll just mute as, as needed. Um, but I'm going to share my screen. Like I said, I have a little slideshow. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'll try to check it periodically. Um, but I like to like not see your faces so I don't get nervous. <laughs> but if, um, let me share. There we go. And originally I was gonna do this call with Mariana, but she had to be somewhere. So she was unable to get on the call. Um, this call is about recruiting or prospecting. Okay. Um, and on here it says, you know, you know, whose life you can change. And I think that's the most beautiful thing about this business that we do have a life-changing opportunity here. And we are, we're able to help people with it and able to offer it to people. One sec. Sorry, it's always technical difficulties when you get on a uh, on a call, right? <laughs> it saves they save themselves for when you're on a call. Everyone can see my screen, right? Of course, nothing works on a one. And we are we are recording, so I will share this in the chat after. Sorry, guys, let me get this working. I never let me share again. Sorry, guys. I know. I feel like that always makes me way more nervous when something doesn't work right. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So these are some of the topics I'm going to be going over. Your personal belief, social media, building connections, and then at the end, some tips and tricks. Belief. Okay, this is, I think, super, super important. And I, if you're on my team, you know I talk about this all the time. I feel like before you can even start prospecting and recruiting, you have to think about your personal belief in the business, in the products, and in yourself. And those three areas are extremely important um, for being successful in recruiting and prospecting and even ensuring the products, right? Um, but before you can recruit, and I always say this to my girls, you have to believe in all three. Can you guys make sure you're muted, please? Um, first of all is the products. Um, how can you like improve or strengthen your belief in the products, especially if you just started? Um, there's a lot of ways to do that. Obviously you have your upline, your team, um, but also we have a slew of information in the back office, product knowledge calls, all the things to be able to train yourself and learn more about the products. For me, the most important is definitely personal use. 
So figuring out which products work the best for you, which ones you love, and it's easier to talk about things when you're personally using them and loving them, right? Um, so it doesn't feel like you're being salesy, which everyone doesn't want to feel salesy. Um, and just being able to talk about the ones that work for you, why they work for you. And if some, if you find something that works for you and that you love, you're going to be excited about it. And it's definitely going to show when you're talking about the products, um, learning about competitors, what else is out there, especially when you're prospecting, because it's important to know, you know, what other companies are popular right now to learn a little bit about them. I think that's nice because when you are talking to somebody, they're going to ask you, like, how is this like this company? How is this like this company? It's company, but I, I go all the way up to 3.14659. Sorry, guys. Um, and then another way, especially if you just started, you're not going to have so many of your personal stories or you're not going to have, you know, months or years of use to be able to show before and afters of yourself. But asking your chat, asking your upline, um, you can also even just... Well, what are you doing? Sit afters. down. There's so many before and afters out there of people that, you know, have had amazing results. And you can share those stories um, with your social media, friends and family. One thing that I used to do when I first started is if like, let's say someone in our chat shared an amazing curly hair before and after. And I have a friend that has curly hair. The first thing I would do was send that before and after to my friend. Oh my gosh, I was just thinking of you because this girl on our team has the same exact hair as you and look at how the products are working for her. So not only did I post them on social media, but I was sharing them personally and sending them to people. The other thing you have to have really strong belief in is the business. And I think, you know, everybody's here and you join for a reason. If you've been in the business, then you already have your success story. You already have what's worked for you, what you've gotten out of it. So being able to share that what you want to achieve. If you're somebody that is new, you're able to talk about the things you want to get out of the business. You can use other people in the business and share their stories as well. Um, learning the comp plan, that for me was I'm what got me because I was able to see how to make the most money, how to be successful in it, what I needed to do to be successful financially in the business. And that got me excited. That strengthened my belief in the business because I was like screaming that from the rooftops. I'm like, do you need X amount of dollars by next week? I can show you how to do that. So being really familiar with how to make money, how to build blocks, how to get those bonus bonuses is really important. Um, and then also, I think a really big thing is that helped me um, strengthen my belief in the business was the community. I really dove into the community and I was somebody that initially when I started, I was like, I'm not going to you know, go on the trips. I don't need friends. I don't want to do all that. I'm just joining for the money. Initially, that's what I told myself. Um, but getting to know, you know, my team, spending time with them, finding people locally also that did the business in attending all the Monet events that they had locally. I know in, here in Vegas, there's one, I think, on this Thursday. Um, doing those things really strengthened my belief in the business. Um, and the last thing is ourselves, right? Whoops. Um, we need to really believe in ourselves. I think self-development is super important and it's something, you know, that I dabbled in, I think, before I started the business. But once I started just being able to get on calls where I was really, really becoming the best version of myself um, and, and learning all the things, accessing all the chats. Um, I know a lot of leaders recommend specific books and different podcasts. Um, if you guys are on the chat, I would love to know if you have a favorite book, if you have a favorite podcast that you've really learned from, something that's really helped your belief in yourself. If you guys could share it in the chat, because there are a lot of girls on this call that maybe haven't, you know, yet, but we need to share those things. I think it's super important to share those with each other. That's such a big part of this business. Um, so if you have those, share them in the chat. Sorry, you guys, people are wild. <laughs> Unmute. <laughs> um, let me see. Is anyone sharing? Sorry, I'm just scrolling. Level Up Podcast. I host Boot Club every week and it helps. Yes. Get Over Your Damn Self book. That is like the first book, right? That everyone should read. Ed My Left. Debbie Neal, Atomic Habits How to Be a Boss Bitch. Eric Thomas, get over yourself. Debbie Neal podcast. Yes, I love all of these. And if you guys are ever, you know, hearing or a podcast or reading a book or Eric Worre, of course, um, Abraham Hicks. Yes, Abraham Hicks. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, if you guys are ever learning any of that, share that with your sidelines, your uplines. So many of us are always trying to learn even more. But if you're new, definitely try 
to, to talk to people around you, talk to people in your chats, whether it's your upline or a sideline and find out what book was the most, you know, instrumental in their growth, whether it's a book or a podcast. Um, but look at, there's so many amazing ones. TikTok creators. Yeah. TikTok is an amazing platform and they're able to share a little, you know, really impactful things in such a short yeah. amount of time. So if you're somebody that isn't, doesn't love that reading, thing, yeah, no? TikTok is an amazing place. Um, and then confidence obviously comes with all of that, which I'll dive into a little bit. And then the last thing is know who the F you are. I think it's really important when you're in this business um, to, to be really strong in, in your beliefs and why you're doing this, because it's really easy to get swayed and get discouraged when you're not really strong in this area. So these three areas, if you're taking notes, make sure you write down the three areas that I think everyone needs to always constantly be working on their belief in, and that's the products, the business, and yourself. What are common fears? Um, a lot of people, when they start this business and when they think about recruiting, a lot of people start and they're like, oh, I can sell shampoo, I can promote products, um, but I'm scared to recruit or I don't want to build a team. A lot of people are scared of this. Um, and they think the three main reasons usually are it's too hard, they'll get criticized, or they'll fail. Um, I think the solution to all of this is really focusing on what we know for sure. And when I started in the beginning of this business, I really focused on those things. I was like, what do I know for sure? I, I, I'm not going to say my hair grew 10 inches, right? Because I'm just starting. I'm just trying out the products. I'm not going to say these are the most amazing products in the world. I'm going to say these products are better for me. I know that for sure. Um, if I'm talking about the business, I'm going to say these women have made X amount of dollars. You're able to earn these trips. Those are things I know for sure. Not that I've done them yet, um, but there are things that I know for sure. And I always, always encourage my new girls to focus on that. They don't have to have like the amazing stories and accomplishments and before and afters. But if you focus on the things that you know for sure, that's a, a good way to be able to talk about those things. And I said, what is the solution? Today, I will choose courage over comfort. Um, the one promise or the one thing like my life motto is that I never break a promise to myself. And I think a lot of times we think that once the timing is right or once we get these results or once we feel confident. And I think that people don't realize often that the results and the confidence comes from the action. And I always think about it like a circle, right? Um, if you take the action, you're going to get results. And sometimes we think the results have to be signing a market partner or making that sale or, you know, whatever it is. But sometimes the result is just that we did it, right? The result is that we were able to make the post. The result was that we were able to reach out to somebody. And what happens after we do that, it gives us the confidence because we accomplished our task, right? So I always think about that. The, if I'm scared to do something, I, I have to take action, whether it's a small little baby step in that direction, but taking action is what gives you confidence and it really, really helps you in this business. So now that we've talked about the belief that you have to have in this business, um, I wanna talk a little bit about social media. And the other, the, the last thing I do wanna say about belief, which I didn't even say, is when I talk about the business, I genuinely believe and I know that it is life changing. So when somebody, you know, isn't interested in it, I, I feel bad for them. Like I'm, I'm so excited and hopeful and I know that this opportunity could possibly change their life. And I think when people start, they think like they're bothering somebody or they're like, please try this or please listen to this call. No, I feel like I am holding the golden ticket. And, you know, if they're not ready yet, that's on them. But I already know that the opportunity that I have is gold. And I, I, I think when you approach it in that way and you're excited about it in that way, if people can really tell, they feel your excitement and um, they, they'll join when their, their time is right, right? Um, so social media, this is essentially your online business card. Um, some things that I like to think about when I look at my social media and, and new girls' social media. And when I'm talking about new girls, obviously there's a lot of leaders on this call so this is things that you can implement with your new girls if you're not already. And, um, and yeah, um, is your page attractive? Um, would you want to join you? I always look at that when I post something, when I'm talking to my captions, is this something that I would be attracted to? Is this something that I would want to join? Um, be loud. Be, and, and by be loud, I mean, you know, be, this is part of who you are, right? If you really want to be successful in this business, 
This is part of your brand. This is part of who you are, whether you're a mom, a student, an athlete, whatever you are, own other businesses. We have a lot of people in the medical field. You have a lot of people in education. This is also part of who you are. So if you're showing up on socials and you're always posting your workouts, you have to figure out how to make this part of who you are as well. Um, and that's what I mean by be loud. And then consistency is key. And I, my girls, I'm always talking about consistency and showing up daily because people are, you know, it takes people a while to catch on, right? You might have different people viewing your stuff every day. Um, and also not only prospects, but also your team. If you have people that are already on your team, you want them to see what you're doing. You are an example for the people on your team. So consistency is super important. Um, why do I think social media is important? The first thing and the most, I don't know if it's the most important, but it's free, right? It's free advertising. It's free commercials. It's free, free, free. Um, so for you to be able to, to attract more people and talk to more people on social media, and you have this free avenue to do it, I think that is one of the most important reasons why social media is important. Um, the second thing is you're able to grow your network on social media. No matter where you are, you know, no matter what part of the world you're in, um, no matter how you how you look at the moment and no matter how you feel, you're able to grow your network with that little device you have on your phone. A lot of people join and they love doing in-person stuff, which is amazing. But social media for a lot of people is, is the hard part, right? And it's the part that they're scared of. But I think you really have to embrace it um, for the, because it's the easiest way to grow your network. <clears throat> you don't have to go meet 100 people in that day, but you're able to meet 100 new people on social media. The last reason I think it's really, really important is because you're able to show up authentically on social media. You're able to show people who you really are. You're able to go a little deeper and, and you know, show people all the things that are important to you or exciting to you on social media. And it really helps um, show people that you're genuine and authentic. These are some questions that I think you guys should be asking yourself. And I ask myself these things constantly. Um, is my IG my business card? And IG, obviously, if you use another platform, that's applicable as well. Um, but I feel like I grow my business the most on Instagram. Um, is it your business card? Are you showing up like the business woman you want to be, the businessman you want to be? Um, are you loud about your business? Are you showing up daily? Can you guys in the chat just tell me, and I'm just trying to get an idea of where we're at. Does everybody in the chat, how many times a day do you post on your stories? On average, obviously it's different. Seven, 10, at least five to seven. Minimum of five, three, five to seven, five to 10. Oh, I love this. Is, is, are the people that are not active on their stories the ones that are not answering? <laughs> um, no, I think your stories are really important. Yeah, I just want to know stories. How many times are you posting on your stories? And I'm excited to see some of the new girls saying five because when you first started the business, you weren't, right? Um, but no, stories are really important. The last question, are you authentic, relatable? And I ask myself all the time. Like, cause I think sometimes when you are looking at social media, it's really easy to be like, I wanna post like them or be influenced by how you're talking and how you're showing up. So I always am asking myself like, does this ring true for me? Would this attract me? Would this speak to me? Um, so I think that that for me is really, really important. So these are three questions I think you can ask yourself when you're looking at your social media and when you're you're deciding if you're being effective on your social media. Okay, one way that I really like to post is attraction marketing. This to me is everything. Um, and it'll all kind of make sense at the end. If you're not already posting in this way, I think you should try to implement some of these strategies because attraction marketing is you basically living your life but it is the best way to find your people. Um, and I'm just going to like explain some of these pictures. So, you know, everyone's attracted to different things, right? On top, we have Tiffany getting her car. Maybe there's somebody that needs a car desperately. I know Tiffany, when she started the business, she really wanted the car. That was a big motivator for her. So her seeing Astrid post her car definitely got Tiffany interested and excited and ready to work her business. Um, on the right, we have Michelle on a jet ski. Um, and that could be somebody that's attracted to that, that obviously she looks amazing on the jet ski, but like 
somebody that wants to travel more, somebody that wants to, you know, find friends that like to travel, someone that wants to earn the trips. Um, and on the bottom, we have Sam with her kids. You know, there's moms that want more time with their kids. So thinking of the different parts of your life that you can show that people are going to be attracted to and people might want. The two things that are on this slide that I think are the most important is the girl on the right walking her dog and the cup of coffee. And you know why? I always tell people to post those little, <laughs> Astrid said, I love us, um, to post those little beautiful moments throughout your day. Sometimes I always think about this and I use the walking the dog example because sometimes you're walking your dog, right? And, and you're not thinking much of it, but you post that on your social media. There might be somebody that's stuck that's in the right now that wishes they could be walking their dog, that wishes they could be enjoying that cup of coffee. So I think also, you know, we always think about like, oh, I don't have these big grand things to post. I don't have a picture of me on a jet ski or me earning my car, but you do have beautiful moments throughout your day that, you know, I think can be really impactful on socials. And we just don't think about it like that. So posting those little things, I, I encourage people to find those beautiful moments in their day that they can share, whether it's you playing with your babies, walking your dog, drinking your coffee. Um, those are, that's how you kind of find your people. That's how, you know, people are going to be attracted to you, whether you're working out um, or doing anything, honestly, like showing parts of your life that's what people are going to be attracted to. That's what people are going to connect with. And that's what's going to get you engagement. So you don't have to have the, the big grand moments. You can have those little moments and share those. And I think those are equally as impactful. This is, okay, this is kind of embarrassing to share, but this is one of the slides that I made when I, and it wasn't very like aesthetically pleasing, but I want to show you guys um, how important storytelling is. Because when I posted this, so I got so many people responding. Um, and now my slides look a little bit prettier. Um, but I, I, I go through it. Like I always ask, get asked why I started this business. Let me keep it real. I first started because I saw people making a lot of money. Um, and I love adding different street streams of income to my portfolio. Little did I know I would gain so much. And then I go into, you know, helping people get more time with their families, traveling more financial freedom, all of those things. Um, and then at the end, I added a poll, which I think that's really, really important too, to give people an opportunity to interact with you. Um, adding polls really helps. Sometimes you're going to get no people. Sometimes you'll get a bunch of people. Um, but that's just a way to get people to interact and engagement so that you have people to talk to and people to approach and talk to the business about the business too. Um, and you have to think too, like who could, who would something, what would, who would attract to something like this? Who would be a, I can't even talk right now. Who would this appeal to? <laughs> people that might be money driven because I'm walking onto a plane, dreamers, free spirits, people that want to travel more, people that are business minded. So I'm going to get into why that's important as well. The trifecta. And I, I kept this slide simple because I think you guys have to remember these three things and why they're all important. So posts, real, and then real time things such as stories and lives all serve a different purpose. Um, and I think they're all really, really important and they don't work as well unless you're doing all of them. So posts are for people that are scrolling, somehow landed on your page. They're going to see your page, right? And they're like, oh, she's cute or, oh, her kids are cute or her family's fun or she posts really informational things. So I'm going to follow her. Um, reels are the way that you attract new people. So posts, you're giving value to people that already follow you or you're just kind of showing who you are in general but reels are the way that you attract new people. So the reels are gonna bring the people in, the posts are gonna be like the content that you're sharing, whether it's informational, it's funny, or it's just a, you know something about you. And then the stories and the lives are where your followers get even more. So it's like you get to go deeper there. And I think that's why it's my favorite place. Not that I don't talk about the business in my posts, or my reels, but I feel like my stories are where I'm sharing sales, where I'm, or the lives where I'm getting more into the business stuff is for people that are already like me and they want a little bit more. So that's where you're able to show even more of your life, even more of your business. So I definitely think that if you're like, let's say you do well at posting or on lives that you definitely incorporate reels as well. So make sure you're doing all three of these because that's the way you're able to like get the most bang for your buck and the most impact on socials. Okay, building connections. Um, the three ways that you can build connections, well, two ways really, networking and then reaching out um, and then finding your tribe I'm gonna get into. These are the three different areas that I think are really important. So networking, this is like a concept that 
some of you guys might think is um is a little different um so i started thinking of myself I, i'm much so much an introvert that i'm like scared to to approach people i'm scared to like sell anything right um, so I kind of changed my mindset and it's really helped my business in the best way. I just think about myself as a professional networker. My job is to always be growing my network. That's that's all my job is. Because if you think about it, if you're showing up on socials and if your business is part of who you are already and you're growing your network, all of the rest kind of comes naturally. You're always growing your network. So new people are coming around you. You're meeting new people, whether it's online or in real life. Um, but that's how people are going to, you know, get to know what you're doing because you're posting on socials and you're talking about it and you're about your business. Right. Um, but I think when I changed my mindset to start thinking about myself as a professional networker, as opposed to like a shampoo seller <laughs> um, or a recruiter, I think it really made me feel much more authentic in, in what it is that I do. Um, and if you guys are struggling with like feeling salesy or feeling like you're recruiting and like, you know, begging people to get on calls, start just thinking about growing your network. How can I grow my network? How can I meet more people? And then all of the other things that you should be doing to implement implementing these things into your business, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to grow your business. So how are there ways to network? What other ways can you network? You can have parties. Those can be like big parties, little parties. Um, you can have coffee dates. Um, there's girls on my team, two ladies that meet every single Thursday for coffee in um, Colorado. And it's beautiful because sometimes there's two of them, sometimes there's five of them, and they just meet for coffee, they invite potentials. Um, sometimes it's just those two taking, you know, working, spending it working if no one else shows up. But I always tell them to take content, share that, that creates the FOMO. So even a coffee date can be, you know, networking, attending other people's events. I always think that in this business, we think like we need to throw events, we need to throw parties, which we definitely should, but attending other events, going on Facebook, I'm on like... I'm in a Facebook hiking group because I like hiking a lot here in Vegas. Um, you know, finding your other interests and connecting with those people is a great way to network. Um, shampooing someone's hair. So networking and having an event could simply be you just shampooing one person's hair. Hey, can I come over and shampoo your hair? One thing I did when I was back home and I'm from Wisconsin and I had all the makeup, I purchased all the makeup from that we came out with. Um, and I had it all in, in the little kit that it came with and I just dropped it off at my aunt's house I met like hung out with her for a little bit and I was like, oh, try all the makeup and did like a little makeup try on with her. And then when she's done, I took it to my other aunt's house. So that is even though it's somebody I already know that was networking and she bought a ton of makeup. Um, so I think there's different ways. I think we always think like having an event or networking has to be this big thing. We have to spend a lot of money and it really doesn't have to be. Um, and then on, at the end, I put networking for introverts because my little like hack to networking, especially for someone like me that's like terrified to go up to somebody is to wear my Monet gear. And I know it sounds silly. Um, also in the gym, I'll, I always have something going on, whether it's my hat or like my socks or whatever. Um, I always take my products with me and have them out the entire time I'm like changing. So after I'm um, done with my workout, I'll have my oil there or I'll have my shampoo and conditioner. Even if I'm not going to like shower that day or wash my hair that day, I have everything there. Um, at the gym so people can see it. And I, it's an easy way to strike up a conversation. People, So many people have been like, oh my gosh, I've tried that. Or what is that? Like the oil, because I'm so extra with the oil. I'm putting it on my lips. I'm putting it on my skin. Um, so just thinking of creative ways, especially if you're an introvert, that really works for me to build my network, grow my network um, in, in a less scary way. <laughs> okay, this is, I think, what a lot of people think about when you think about um, prospecting and recruiting, and it's the reach out, right? Um, for me, and this is just the way I work my business, I don't love cold messaging. Um, some people do, and some people are great at it and find a lot of success in it, and I'm not saying that I've never done it, um, but I just feel like you're more successful if you make that cold market your warm market. And it's not too hard to make so, turn someone from a cold reach out to like a warm reach out. Everyone's like laughing because their pic your guys' pictures are all over the stage. Um, but so these are just some examples, right? Like if I was going to reach out to Astrid and I saw this beautiful picture of her on here, 
I'd be, <laughs> I'd be like, hi, Astrid, I know we haven't talked much on here, but I admire your hustle and I wanted to invite you to a call. I know you have several successful collabs and I think the business I'm in would be perfect for you. Are you free tomorrow night to learn how I make money with this? So the reason I use certain words there is I looked at Astrid's page. It looks like she likes nice things. So that's why I mentioned making money with it. Um, she promotes other products or talks about like she's been posting her clothing lately. So I want to appeal to what she's already doing. And it's a way to tell her that she'd already be good at this. Right. Um, so if you guys don't know Astrid, go follow her and get her clothing links. Um, but on the bottom tip, he's with the girl. So if it was uh, someone that I went to their page and they had a bunch of, you know, friends on their page, I kind of know that they're more social, right? I also noticed on her page that she has an aesthetics um, business as well. So hi, Tiffany, I just saw you still have your aesthetics business. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about what I do. It would be a great way to add another stream of income to what you're already doing. We also have so many fun events. And I mentioned that because it looks like she likes to hang out with her friends. Um, you would love our team. I think it's a no brainer since you're already recommending products to your customers and so passionate about skincare. Is it okay if I call you later today? Um, so the rules, I make everyone my warm market. So if it is somebody in my cold market, I just start interacting with them on socials. I might be complimenting them. I might, and obviously I'm being genuine, genuine compliments. Don't just like say anything to anybody, but I think being really genuine, getting to know them a little bit on socials. And this is again for an introvert, um, but this also works in real life. Um, so I go to a lot of track meets and soccer games for my kids. So that's a way for me to talk to people there as well. Like if I notice they're coming all the time, I try to pay attention to if they have kids with them or if they have any of their other company gear on. Um, so getting to know them a little bit, I think, and just interacting with them before I shoot these messages <laughs> has made it a lot more impactful and successful. Um, this picture right here is a picture of me. Oh my God, Lisa, another trip because I'm traveling all the time. I just went to Tulum with my company and thought of you. I know how much you love to travel and wanted to tell you how simple it would be for you to get your trips paid for. Your content is already beautiful. Can I send you a recording to listen to? So if you notice all three of these two, I use different ways to either, either get them on a call or send them a recording. Because let's say, for example, if I know that Lisette's going to turn me down because she's always busy and traveling, um, then I might just be like, this way you can listen to the call on your own time. Um, and I know that she most likely wouldn't want to get on a call. And for example, like Tiffany is somebody I talk to all the time. So I'm like, hey, can I talk to you, call you later? Um, since I know she'll take my call and I'm already friends with her, right? Um, and then on the right side, Angela, how are you? I thought of you because you're always joking about how much you hate your coworkers. This is like my best way to talk to people because people, if you look, especially on like Facebook, they're always ranting about, oh my God, I hate that I have to go to work today. Or like I worked for 13 hours today. So it's a good like way to kind of slide in there and start the conversation. Um, you're always joking about how much you hate your coworkers. And Angela did not say this. I'm just using her as an example. LOL. I wanted to invite you to coffee. I've been able to get a lot of Busy moms help a lot of busy moms quit their jobs and make a full-time income from their phone. You're, and if, if you, like I said, if you haven't been in the business for long, you don't have to say, I've been able to do this. You can say a lot of women on our team have been able to quit their job because that's facts, right? Um, you're so outgoing and great at sharing products you love. So I wanted to explain a little more about what I do to see if it's a good fit. Can we meet this week? The other little tip is that at the end, I always, always, always ask like a direct question. Um, are you able to meet or do these times work for you? I always, I just feel like a lot of times when you don't, you're like, oh, how does this sound? Or just kind of vague about it. Then people will leave you on red. You're more likely to get ghosted. Um, and this again is just what works for me. Um, and I feel like I'd rather personally get a no than just being left on red, right? <laughs> I, I don't know if, if, if you've been in the business for a minute, you know what it feels like to, to get left on red and that's not fun. I'd much rather them say yes or no. Um, and if they say no, I always ask, oh, well, I'd love to know why I, you know, and usually they'll tell you like, I don't like this or I don't like that. And then you can kind of talk about it for a bit. It'll keep the conversation going. <clears throat> Find your tribe. This is kind of the last thing and it ties everything together for me. I think if you're showing up on socials, if you're, you know, growing your network and if you're showing who you are on social media, it's the best way to grow your team in a way that like feels authentic to you and to find the people that you are re really aligned with. 
I feel like it's really hard to find people that are like-minded when you're not sharing any of your yourself on socials or in real life. Um, so I think it's just really important to show up for yourself authentically and genuinely um, on social media and in real life, because that's how you find your people. That's how you find, you know, the people that you're going to connect with and align with the most. Um, and I think we definitely did on our team. So it's awesome to know that just showing up like yourself is going to get you business partners that you, you know, the ones that you dream of and the ones that you want to work with and how amazing it is, is it that we're able to like essentially choose who we work with and choose who our coworkers are. I think that's one of the really cool things about our business. Um, and then <laughs> Astrid says, just say yes or not. Um, but at the end, I just wanted to leave it open. If you guys have any questions, I know there are a lot of leaders on the team. And if you, you know, maybe someone else wants to share something, but if you have any specific questions or any um, objections that you've gotten that you're not really sure how to navigate, I would love to help. If anyone has anything. You can unmute yourself. Oh, going to the husband first. Oh, I hate that one. <laughs> I hate that one, honestly, because I don't want to like insult them and, you know, say that, oh, you have to ask your husband. Um, but I just talk to them about like what their goals are. I just focus. I try to keep it more positive. I'm like, you know, what are your goals with this? What do you want to get out of it? Because usually if I can help them focus on that and show them how I can help them achieve that, then they're more likely to be like, okay, let me just do it. Um, yeah. A lot of them are about money, not having money, not having money. Um, so the money one to me is like the easiest one, because if you don't have the money, this is the reason why you need to join. Right. Um, so I just talk about like different examples. I'll say, you know, if you need, let's say right now it's $150 to join we're able to do that in the next like three to four days. I show them how building a block is going to give them an extra $250 bonus. And I'm like, we can, how many people do you know that wash their hair and, you know, need some extra income? I can, and I kind of make it more tangible and show them how easy it is and break it down. And then they're like, oh, I can definitely do that. You know, like I'll, I'll put it on my credit card or I'll, this girl I, I talked to the other day, she's like, I'm selling some of my Jordans because I want to join so bad. And she doesn't have any, you know, the cash to do it. Um, someone said, how do you get past the soft market? So soft, you mean cold, <laughs> cold market. Um, so cold market is just somebody you don't know. So get to know them. Like, how would you get to know them in real life? Like start the, the easiest and the best way is to give someone a compliment. If somebody DMs you that you're beautiful or they love your dress or whatever, they're going to start talking to you, right? Thank you so much. Um, but I think just interacting with them on socials or in person, like at the games, I always will ask, I'm always in the sauna at my gym too. I'll be like, oh, what shoes are those? Um, and I feel like it, then they'll they'll tell me, oh, I'll send you the link. And not only did I get kind of get past the cold market, but I also like built a new connection and I have their number now. So I'm able to be like, oh, hey, I wanted to invite you to this thing. Um, how do you deal with prospects that ghost you? Ooh, Astrid, do you want to answer that? <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? How do you deal with prospects that ghost you? Oh, um, honestly, I'm the kind of person that I am very like resilient. So I'm no, I'm, la, la. Oh God, scared me. Um, I'm assuming that the reason why I'm getting ghosted is like there's nothing wrong with me, right? I have an opportunity in my hands that I truly believe is like a gift. So I think if somebody ghosted me, it's more about them than it is about me. So I like to reach out and just be like, hey, babe, I assume you're busy. I just wanted to follow up. Hey, I hope all is well. I didn't hear back from you. So I show some empathy because I'm just like, I'm so confident in the fact that this business is a gift when I'm presenting to that to them has so much value that in my head, I know I'm not getting ghosted because of anything else other than there's a limiting belief, something happened to them, they got busy, something in the way. So I try to get to the bottom of to as to why I got ghosted. So I'm like, hey, I hope all is well. I didn't hear back from you. Or 
hey, just following up, just wanted to make sure I answered all your questions. And most of the time I'm like, hey, love, how are you? I start a brand new conversation. Like if I didn't get ghosted, I'm super Delulu, right? <laughs> I live in my Delulu land and I'm like, hey, love, what's up? And then they're like, hey, how are you? And I'm like, what, what happened? And I'm straight up. I'll send a voicemail and be like, hey, what happened? Like you ghosted me. Is everything okay? You scared me. Like, because why me getting ghosted? Like that doesn't happen, right? So you just honestly have to like program yourself to believe in this opportunity so much that you understand that if you are getting ghosted, it's less about the opportunity. It's less about you, but more about them, their limiting beliefs, their insecurities, maybe their unsupportive partner, maybe something happens, maybe their kids got sick, maybe they're tired, maybe they went, you know, like, there's so many times that people DM me, like even my old friends, that sometimes I mean to write back and then completely flies over my head, right? So don't take it personal and just live in your Delulu land and try to figure out how you can continue to present this in a way that this person sees the value in the opportunity. That's what I would say about getting ghosted. Yeah, no, I love that. And I, I think it goes back to like why I talked about belief for 15 minutes. I think that's so important. You have to be so strong in that because when you are, it, it really doesn't affect you. Like you're like, oh, well, they're lost. I have I have that golden ticket that they're, they're just leaving on the floor, right? Um, I think that's super important. And then another little phrase, and if you guys are taking notes, write this down and it changed my life is assume positive intent. I wrote it in the chat. And I think if you apply this, not only to this business and it's what Astrid said, assume that you know something happened assume they missed that call or that that text assume like the best possible thing right I think a lot of times we tell ourselves the crazy stories oh I sucked I didn't do a good job presenting the opportunity or she doesn't like me or she doesn't trust me or one of those things so I think in in this applies to like every relationship and interaction I think if you assume positive intent all the time and live in your Delulu. That's a, it's a, a, a easier way, you know, to say it, live in your Delulu uh, head or land. Um, I think it, it helps you in so many situations because it helps build your confidence and know that like, you're not the problem. Right. <laughs> um, and then the last, I wanted to add oh, something else. Um, so just super random, but Today, this morning, um, I went to yoga and the mantra for the practice was detachment. And this is something that I've been practicing, like in my life, not just with like my, you know, prospecting my business, but my relationships and like my personal life. Right. And a lot of the times um, what it is, is that we are so attached to an out outcome. Right. So detach yourself from the outcome because you are just going to freak out because if you don't get the desired outcome, you're going to hurt your own feelings because you have this attachment to the outcome. Instead, like attach yourself to the journey, see every reach out as a practice, right? Instead of being like, oh my God, like this person said, no, it's the end of the world, right? Because you got the negative outcome, just see it all as positive. Every no is going to get you closer to a yes. Let me like not focus so much on the outcome, but focus more into perfecting the craft, right? Like just trying your reach outs, doing the reach outs, doing the things. And you know that with practice comes perfection, right? Like you perfect your craft. So don't be so like attached to the outcome and more like attach yourself to the practice, the journey, the process. Um, and I think that's going to help you a lot when you get some sort of rejection, because you got to remove all that like emotional attachment you have to the word no, to rejection, to ghosting, to all those things that in reality, what they do is just hurt your ego, your self-esteem. You feel rejected, you feel down. But if you understand that every reach out is just going to get you closer to your your yes, and you're, it's going to get you closer to that person that you're meant to work with, then you're going to be fine in your journey. And you're not going to be like, you're not going to freeze. It's not going to paralyze you. Definitely. No, I love that. And I think if you're keeping track of like the work that you do every day, instead of how many MPs or VIPs did I get, how many people did I talk to, right? How many new people did I connect with? 
because you can't really fail at that if you're doing the work if you're if you're if you have a goal and you're reaching out to that many people and talking to that many new people and growing your network then you're not as focused on like like Astrid said like the outcome but I think that's it if no one else has any other questions thank you guys for letting me host today by my by my lonesome <laughs> I was nervous um Oh, I'm sorry. One, this last question. Can you walk us through what your daily to do's look like in terms of socials and reaching out? Definitely. I have a daily tracker. I know Liz has one as well. Um, a lot of people have created them um, and I'll share them in a couple chats. Um, but I personally, I make sure I have five stories on my socials every day, at least. I just feel like that's a good number. People still stay interested. Um, and then I try to reach out to at least five, sometimes 10 people every day, new people just to like grow my network and, and talk to new people and have new new people to interact with. And then I try every few days to do um, some polls on my on my socials as well, just because again, that helps me interact with new people and grow my network as well. Um, I think it's super important to think about the things that you do, you know, on your worst day. Like, what am I gonna do on my, the worst day when I can't show up and I feel like crap and I don't like how I look and I'm not gonna do this. What are those things? Because those are your like daily non-negotiables. And then anything else from there is kind of extra, which obviously we should still be doing those extra things. But I think about it as like, you know, opening the doors to your business. Say you're not clocking into your, your business that day, but you have to go unlock the doors. Like, what are you going to do to unlock the doors and open your business for the day? And that has really helped me compartmentalize and also be able to say like, okay, I feel like crap today or I'm sick or my kids are crazy or I have to do a million things. What are my things that I'm going to show up for so I can open the doors to my business today? So I think that's different for everybody, but I definitely think showing up on socials, checking the chats um, are two things that are really, really important and talking to new people. But um, thank you guys so much. Um, if you have any questions, you can message me on socials. If we're not in the same chat, um, um, you love Lisa on Instagram. Um, but thank you guys so, so much. Have a great night. Oh, and sorry, Lisa, before yeah. you go, um, Harry and asked when you interact, how do you get them to follow you? One of the things that I personally like to do is that when I do interact with somebody, I, you know how you can save, um, you can save a post. What I do is that I have diff, like I have folders that you can save different pictures to so I have a reach outs folder right so anytime I interact with someone I save like one of their pictures to my reach out folder um, I'm starting to do it by month before I used to just have like a potential reach outs folder now I have like my my main reach out folders right and what I do is that I consistently like I start new interactions, add them on there. But when I do that, then I also go to that folder and I interact with people that I've interacted with. Right. One of the things that I think people think is going to happen is that you go, you do like the three to one method to one person. And they're automatically going to, you know, follow you back. That's not going to happen. You have to also build a relationship. So what I like to do is. You know, if there's like this person that I really see their social media, I see their posting, I like something about them, I resonate with them. And this is somebody that I really would love to be part of my team that I feel like could, you know, be a value to my team. I put them in that potential reach out folder. And whenever I do my reach outs, probably like, you know, I'll make it a point once a week to build, um, to visit that reach out folder. And then I consistently interact with them. I reply to their stories and like I start talking to them to the point where our conversation is going on and eventually they do end up following you. So if what you do, if what you want is for them to follow you, you can do like a one day three to one method and then like never visit them again. Right. So you have to build relationships. And that's what this whole business is about is about building relationships and you're not going to do that by just interacting them with with them once sometimes I've been like literally interacting with people in that potential reach outs folder for like four months before they start reaching out to me or even six months before they even join me and that's another thing that I hope that everybody in this call like has in the back of their mind is that this for me, and I know for many on my team, see this as a long-term thing. Like we're here for the long run. I'm not trying to like interact with the person on Instagram today, get them to follow me, and then like want that instant gratification. I'm building relationships. I'm showing people what this could do for them because I understand that I'm here for the long run and this can help them in the long run, right? So don't look for like a quick way to get people to follow you. Um, instead, think about like, how can you build a relationship with them so as they could see like, also like 
you got to provide value. If you're not providing any value, if you're not providing any education, if you're not providing any entertainment, if you're not providing anything of value on your social media, why is somebody even going to go to follow you, right? So you have to interact with a long-term goal in mind. And then you also have to make sure that you keep them engaged and you keep you make them want to follow. Because if you're not posting daily, you're not sharing who you are, you're not sharing your day to day, you don't have a daily to do list like what Lisa is showing. Like if I end up following you, I'm just going to unfollow you. Right. So one of the things that I think is also really important, it's not only getting to interact with the people, getting these people on your page, getting these people to follow you, but your follower retention, you want your followers to stay there. So. I think that's more than enough we've said today, but thank you, Lisa, for letting me hop on. Um, and yeah, you did amazing, sweetie. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night and try to implement some of these things that we talked about. Um, I'm excited to see all your socials and, and how it's impacted them. Good night.